Well, good morning, everybody. It's a beautiful Saturday morning. Um, it's cold here in the state of Texas. It's, I'm pretty sure it's cold everywhere else. And this morning, joining me is the owner of the AIF's Harrisburg Stampede, Justin Coble. He's having a good morning. I'm having a good morning. We're all happy to be here. I'm glad this is the second interview part of the series this year. Um, and he just wanted me to fire away. So my first question for you is how has it been owning a team that has been in, in the arena indoor service before, because Harrisburg has been a team that's been a part of the AIF in the past and other leagues in the past, but now they're back for the 2024 season in the AIF. So how's it um, been so far? It's been, uh, it's been exciting. So I, my backstory is I used to coach. I actually coached for a couple of years on the Harrisburg Stampede. And then um, I came over and bought the team before I owned the team. And when it was in playing its last year, one of its last years in the AIF, and I uh, brought up Marcus Colston as my business partner. And then I sold to Marcus Colston my shares and uh, left, and he had it two more seasons. I think he took it to to new league then. And um, so when uh, the league reached out and asked about a relaunch, you know, would I be interested? You know, having had experience owning the team, and um, I still had the rights to the name. So I, I felt like I looked around. I did some research. I talked to a lot of previous staff and family friends, and felt like it was going to be a good time to relaunch it um it's been great it's been a lot of uh, exciting and more highs than lows it's work uh definitely work even bringing it back you know we, we had a logo we have a name we have a blueprint but you know firing up an engine after 10 years of being out of you uh, gone black so it has been exciting there's been a huge um support from the fans the people that remember the brand also gaining a lot of new traction. We're trying to win a fan over one person at a time and one partner and sponsor and nonprofit at a time. We've uh, made a lot of traction, you know, in a six month where, you know, just came back around October time frame. So you're looking at, you know, basically in about three months, four months time. We were about two months away from kicking off our season, a little over two months in that. It's been great. I mean, um, we're we're definitely on the football side. We're ready for that. The business side is catching up. Our game day operations and our fan experience. Um, I treat them all sort of like different sectors within our business. So we have different staff that sort of run those. Uh, the coaches run the football operation. Um, our general manager sort of runs the business operation when it comes to the partnerships. And my assistant GM runs a lot of our um, – nonprofits and then we have some other staff that are running our game day experience and including that's our ticket booth our, our merchandise store and all of the things above so we're excited um we're the last team to kick off in the aif we sort of had our our bye week sort of the front end so everybody will get out of the gate start running they'll think they're all great and they'll be you know winning and then all of a sudden here we come and uh, we're going to kick some butt and, you know, remind them that we're who we are. I'm excited. There's some great teams in the league this year. And we have a lot of uh, experience with um, with the teams. So, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. And I think it's going to be a very good season. Um, it's a lot. The landscape of indoor football is a very, very different from back then. Um, there are good leagues, but there's a lot of differences within the leagues, but I don't think that there's a clear cut, um, you know, top rank. The AFL is not what it used to be. The AFL used to be the premier league that we were trying to help uh, men get to. I don't think that that's the case. I, I don't think, I know it's not the case. Um, AFL got bought out of bankruptcy, so we'll see. It's still... Good to see what actually even happens with that. Um, 
I don't know. So uh, I got a lot of respect for any owner in the AF, uh, IFL, NAL, and AIF. I think the AIF is going to make great strides this year. I think that we were very selective in trying to bring strong ownership and strong teams into the league. And uh, next year we're looking to expand. And that's all. That's all great. Yeah, because you have Beaumont coming in next year, and I believe um, the uh, basically there was a whole split with the whole um, the Council Bluffs team, if I'm not mistaken. So, mm-hmm. like, I believe they're coming in next year too, right? I don't know. I can't speak on any of those things. I speak on my team and what I know with the AIF. All I know is they have is our our desire to expand and to get more teams in. But I think it's more than just getting teams and putting them out there as an announcement. We want to have strong ownership. We want the teams to play their whole season. We want we want them to take care of their players. We want them to have a great fan engagement. I want our fans to have a good experience. That's not just my fans, that's all AIF fans. I want them to come see our brand of football and it, it, it be exciting. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, speaking of some of the other teams in the AIF, some other teams, in fact, yesterday saw an interview yesterday from the boy Dukon, you know, football statement, and um, the head coach of Cedar Rapids was on there, and well, he had he had some words to say, he had some words to say about the Stampede because again, y'all play Cedar Rapids three times this year, I believe, so. Um, so other teams there, you know, familiar with, uh, with that interview, what did he say? Um, it wasn't anything bad. It was it was more of like the competition aspect of it. How y'all played three times this year, you know, and what they did how they with want to beat y'all three times this year. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, but that's cute. Um, when when we hang a lot of points on them, and uh, all I got to say is. We'll, we'll see what the results are. Uh, I'm pretty confident. Um, you know, what the, the league did is they played. So there's we don't play every team in the league. We play some of them more. Cedar Rapids, we play three times. It'll go on win percentage. So that could be good or bad, you know, if um, they get out on us, which isn't going to happen. But when we get out on them, you know, we hang a couple losses on them. That's going to hurt their chances of making the playoffs. But um, I'm not worried. I'm not worried about, I mean, Cedar Rapids. I mean, everybody knows the balls. But the, I mean, yeah, I'm not worried. My coaches my coaches are some of the most experienced. I probably have the most experienced. No, I'm pretty sure I have the most experienced indoor coaching staff. And we've quietly assembled, in my opinion, a, a very, very good team from top to bottom. We have about four or five players we haven't even announced yet. Um, so I'm not worried. I don't have to go on. I'm, I'm an owner. I'm not the coach anymore. I used to coach. I could definitely break X's and O's down. But um, all I got to say is come on out April 6th at home. We play Cedar Rapids. And, uh, yeah, take a look and you'll – That'll be the statement game right there. We'll set the tone for the whole year. And everybody that's why I said everybody else have played. They win or lose or whatever. But if they win, they think they're they're great until they run into the stampede. So gotcha, gotcha. And speaking of the process, you know, you've been talking, you know, about you know, your vendors, your marketing and everything like that. How has how has building the team been so far, you know? You said you got like five guys that you haven't announced yet. We'll we'll wait until y'all announce it, but I just want to get you know the point across of you know how has it been signing some of these guys? Oh, it's great. So you're talking about two different things you mentioned there. So the business side is the the vendors, the the, the businesses, and that all that. We'll talk about that. The player side of it, it's been great. Um, we've had over 300 players register on our website. And want to come play for Harrisburg, send us video. Agents reached out. We've had numerous agents. And, um, you know, my other business affords me. I work with a lot of uh, agents um, for autograph signings and appearances with football players from, you know, 
all the way through NIL, all the way up through the NFL. And I, and so I have a great relationship and, uh, with them. And um, I'll just say it. I know I have a step up on every other team in that department working with them. You know, I'm, I'm booking their, their players for autograph appearances and signings and that transpires. So we already have a worker relationship. And then my coaches are, you know, long standing. I mean, I have coaches 15, 20 years in indoor football. Um, I have ex NFL players on my coaching staff. So they're, they're sitting there reaching out and talking to these guys. They have contacts with for 15 years. It, I don't care what you've done in this sport. I don't care how long you've been around. There's the, none of the coaches in any of these other teams have the name recognition with that my coaches do. So with that being said, I mean, I have, we've had, you know, 70 guys at one workout, 60 guys at another workout. And then we've had a lot of them sending film that, you know, didn't come to workouts that we've chose to bring into camp. Um, we have guys that are, that are being cut from you know, XFL and USFL teams. The agents are reaching out to us. Um, we're a draw, you know, being our geographic. I mean, nobody wants to play. I don't care what they tell you. Nobody wants to play in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Um, no knock on Iowa, but if you're not from Cedar Rapids or all that, who you, you go there to play and you leave. You don't go there to live. People come to Harrisburg and they live. They stay here. We're retiring three former players, jersey numbers, um in our our season this year our first three games two of those players played for the stampede for seven years um archie smith is an indoor legend he played at you know alabama a m he's came here with his family his kids still go to high school and play football he coaches football here he stayed uh eugene goodman play our running back i mean he's the, he's an animal probably one of the best indoor running backs to ever play and he played seven years here played at Liberty University, moved here from Virginia, and he's never left. He owns a restaurant here in her Hershey, PA. So my players come here, and if they don't go up or don't, a lot of them stay. They find it to be a good community. They find it to be a good fan base. And, uh, you know, in a geographic location, we're in the Northeast. I don't have to sell my city to them. I can sell that we're three hours from New York, we're two hours from Philadelphia, three hours from Pittsburgh, two hours from Washington, D.C., and one hour from Baltimore, Maryland. You can't get a better hub than that. You know what I mean? And we're going to highlight and showcase you, and let's just call it what it is. Everybody wants to be on the east or the west coast. You know, they don't, nobody's, nobody's sitting there dreaming of going to Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So, um, we're sitting there. Yeah, that's shots fired. I don't care. Uh, at the end of the day, we bring players in here. We're going to sit there and get them filmed. We're going to get them and keep them in football shape. We're going to treat them like men. We're going to sit there and have the best, most inclusive package to take care of our players from outfitting them in the best gear to putting them in the best uh, possible places to eat, to train, from um, you know rehabilitation services, medical services that we possibly can. They have a great housing provider, and then we're going to pack our arena. They're playing in front of a packed arena every game here at home, and the fans are going to love them. And we're going to put on for the city, and you know, and, and then the plan is to win and win, win fun, and have fun doing it. And um, and, then, you know, as I tell every player, you know, their dream, these young men, young men, is to get film and to move up. And there's no greater pleasure that I would have than driving a player to an airport to fly out to a workout for, you know, U the UFL or CFL or NFL to get them a, a look, you know. Um, I will personally help them get to their dream the best that we possibly can to work together. So I'm excited. We've had a huge influx. I think our history of being around before, I think when players research me and know that I've owned the team before, so it's not a new owner. There's, there's not a lot of unknowns. And then they research and talk to our coaching staff 
and find out that, you know, we got a half dozen arena championships on our team. I have a former AFL head coach that, and he's got multiple Philly soul championships that he coached, you know, and that's not going back to his years of coaching. I mean, you know, he played a few couple of years in the NFL, but years of coaching arena football as the head coach too. I mean, our, our uh, offensive coordinator is innovative. He's former arena quarterback. I mean, he's just uh, players love to play for him. And when you're a football player at this level and you've coached or played arena ball and you talk to a coach, you immediately know if that coach knows what he's talking about. And, you know, and he, he takes their input and they devise plans. So I'm excited. It's going to be, it's going to be a great football. Um, we're going to be fast. We're going to be physical. And they're, 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 the teams now can talk all they want. They're not going to want to play us by the end of the year. How about your season tickets again, by the way? Huh? How about your season tickets? So our season tickets, um, we're currently almost about to pass the season ticket uh, record for the Stampede. Uh, it was it is about to be set this year. Um, we have box seats that are along the wall, two rows along the wall. Those are $40 each. Um, those are almost sold out. We're probably less than 30 left. Um, and then we have our general admission. We, we don't have a bunch of different levels. The general admission are $25 a ticket. So it's $125 for the season. You can bring a family out and, uh, you know, watch good football. There's a lot of entertainment. We have a dance team. We have a drum line. Our drum line is vicious, and uh, the players love that. And then we also will be having halftime shows. We have a nationally recognized women's full contact league that is going to be playing a game uh, or part of a game at our halftime show. We have a hot wing eating contest um, put on by award-winning restaurant here. We also are going to have a step team. That is uh, really awesome. Nationally recognized, they they perform the NBA games and stuff. The Sixers, they're going to be performing. So we're filling up all that. We have um, just a lot of exciting things going. Working with the military, we have a military appreciation game. We have uniforms. Our players will be wearing. Our our players are just going to look insane. We have we have enough uniforms. We can do a game a, every game wear a different uniform. So kind of, kind of like, love that. like so, the Ducks of Oregon in a way. Yeah. yeah. They just basically, our uniforms just arrived. We're going to be doing in a week or two, we'll be doing the, the press conference and doing the play, uh, reveal players wearing the uniforms. We have uh, beautiful practice uniforms. We have beautiful game uniforms. Our military uniform, I think, is going to be the best. Um, we've already, our single game tickets are about 30% above on our season opener in our military game. Our military game will be a packed house. Absolutely a packed house. Which which game is uh, the military game again? May 4th. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So that would be the um, the game against the River Gators of yeah. Albany. Um, as far as a couple other teams go, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know how people are ranking AIF teams yet. I know there's power ranking and stuff like that for like other leagues and stuff, but like there's a couple of teams that are definitely more established that have been playing, you know, a little bit. We'll talk about the Columbus Lions a little bit, maybe the Amarillo Bell. Are you, are you, are you intimidated by those two teams at all? No, 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 I'm not intimidated at all. I can break down. I have respect for the Lions and their ownership and their team. They're an established team. We have a very good relationship with them. Um, not fear, not 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 a what would what is the word you just used? You know, I'm not intimidated at all. I'm not intimidated by anything. I think our I mean, you're looking at the future AIF champions, so I'm not really worried about anybody else. But I have a lot of respect for um the Columbus Lions and their team. There, I'm we're not gonna look past them. And um, I don't play them, um, but if I had to give I don't like to get into the whole power. I've seen a lot of power rankings out there. Let's just put it this way. I have respect for the uh, Columbus Lions, and I have respect for the Amarillo Venom, their head coach. I really like Rick. Um, he's innovative. He's a offensive guru. Um, he's, he's, he's won everywhere he's been, 
and he knows how to score points. Um, we won't see them till the championship. So um, obviously, I have some respect for them and think they're going to be they're going to be there. I think standing at the end. Um, outside of that, some of these are very new teams. I know that um, the, the the Cedar Rapids. I'm not worried about them. So um, you know, we'll see. Time will tell. I'll either be eating these words or I'll be saying that I told you so, and I will remind you that I told you so. You but should. we'll handle our schedule. And we'll get to where we need to be. And, uh, you know, Amarillo on the other side and uh, Corpus and Mississippi and um, the River Gators. Um, there's a lot of unknowns with those teams. I mean, the River Gators are new. Mississippi didn't finish their season last year. Um, or I don't think it's, you know, that's the thing, just because they have the same name. I mean, like us, nobody can, like, you can't say you know our team. Because there's not one player playing that played ten years ago. Yeah, yeah so you that's true. Us. You know what I mean? We have the name, and 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 football can change. So like the Lions played, the Venom have played, but they're all new teams. I mean, there's a whole new ownership team, no new coach, and new players on the Venom. So the it, the experiment could be great and it could be better, or it could be a drop off. Lions, they have a whole new coach. And if I'm correct, I think he's a first-year coach, first-year head coach. Mm. And there's a big difference. I mean, we can, you know, the person can be ready. There, There's coaches that take on, become, you know, first-year coach, and they're great. There's guys that move into the head C, and it, it does. it's not all smooth sailing. Do I think that they're, they have a good system in place in Columbus? Yeah, so I think they'll be fine. I mean, I think they'll be competitive every game, you know. Um, but – no, I don't think that you – I don't. I think that's a new league. None of us played each other last year. So you go down the, the whole board, including mine. I mean, I, I could, we, could, we could fumble the ball. We could come out of the gate and, you know, River Gate, I mean, the, the Cedar Rapids could maybe beat us. You know, I don't think it's going to happen. But, you know, they could, they could be better than we think, and uh, we could be not as good as we think. We won't know until you put the pads on and get in between the walls. But I can tell you this, uh, the walls don't lie. And, you know what I mean, if we're going to find out real quick. So I, I think it's going to be a competitive league. Though. I'm excited about it. I like that, that we're doing, you know, that we don't have a true divisions. Um, we have everybody sort of playing different schedule and they'll go on win percentage. So, you know, top four teams will go advanced playoffs, basically one, four, two, three. Um, highest win percentage will host. And then we'll have the championship game, and hopefully we're going to have the championship game in the sweetest place on earth, Hershey, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, my, one of my last questions is, is, will fans, I know you guys have a YouTube page, so will fans be able to see games stream live on YouTube this year? Yeah. So we have a very, very robust uh, streaming package. We, have, we will have a color analyst, a play-by-play. I will have a field reporter. Um, she'll interview players and coaches during the game. She'll be doing the fan of the game, kiss cams, doing all that. We will. We have commercials. We are. Our games are being streamed on YouTube and live on our website. Our games are being streamed on PCN, which is Pennsylvania Cable Network, live. So on Saturday nights, you can watch PCN and all of our games in its entirety will be right there live. We have multiple restaurants carrying our games live in their restaurants. Uh, shout out to, to Center Street Grill. Okay, they're the first one and some of the other restaurants that are carrying our games. Um, we're still working on adding more restaurants. It's a smart TV system, so it's very easy. We give them a code, they throw it right onto the TV and it airs. So yeah, we're gonna be doing everything. If you wanna watch Harrisburg Stampede football, you absolutely are gonna have the access to it multiple places uh very very high quality we have um four camera system instant replay all of that will be in play with our team gotcha so where can uh, my last question is where can where can they find where can people find you and where can people find the harrisburg stampede so our main meeting? marketing um outside of our website our website's hbgstampede.com 
you can go on there tickets you can um, purchase tickets there we have a, a very robust store uh, team merchandise store we have over 360 items for sale on there our our, our team store our local team store at um, dazzle sports is also you can pick up merchandise in person there at the games we also are very big on our social media um, Facebook is our big one right now and TikTok is being built and Instagram but definitely go to Facebook we always are updating our partners and our different things we do a lot of live videos but go follow it, the proofs in the pudding we just started that four months ago and we're already rolling I mean we have 3,000 followers or something like that um, you know you give me six more months and we'll be the team with the most social media follows because we are working with all of our partners to increase our, our 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 footprint and we do we have a very interactive facebook from going live and you know like when you post this we'll share this onto our social media and advertise you and this interview all you gotta do is tag us in it so yeah we are very very excited about it but you we always have right now we're in a very fun time because almost every day there's a new announcement new partnership a new player signed a new you know press conference being announced there's always new news coming out almost daily so as we build up into the season and go to camp in early march you'll see a lot of that yeah yeah it's it's gonna be one hell of a season let me tell you cannot wait to see y'all start playing april the 6th <laughs> And I think I've kind of fueled the flames a little bit with the whole Cedar Rapids thing, but it's all right. It's all right. It's Just okay. to I'm think. not worried about it. I would have, I would have went there anyways. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's all good. I mean, we do like the truth of the matter is it really is going to make or break our season because they, um, you know, they play us three times. So if they win, they're in a prime position to, you know, that they basically put us. I don't think. Um, you know, I don't know the analytics exactly, but I mean, we need to win those games. They need to win those games. They're very important. When you play somebody three times, you know, you play somebody once, you could have had a bad game. You play somebody three times, you're going to find out where you stand. And um, I got respect for their coaches. I got respect for their players. You know, I pick on the city or I pick on them, but I'll fuel the fire a little bit. Um, but because I believe we could back up our talk. Um, and they come to us first. So, you know, we'll we'll punch them in the mouth, and then we have to go out there, and you know, we're gonna find out. I think home field advantage is gonna be a lot, and we'll see how that goes. Um, but I just know, I mean, I just know what team we've assembled, and you know, I believe in my coach. I, I I'll stand on that. My coaching staff is the most experienced coach staff in AI. Gotcha, gotcha. Man, Justin, I want to thank you so much for coming on with me this morning. Um, I know it was – honestly, it was late last night, and I was starved for content because originally I was going to do something else this morning, but I was like, you know what? I'm just – I'm itching to get an interview in, so I was like, oh, well, I'll ask around we'll and see out, what I can do. Later. We'll bring on one of our coaches or players and let mm -hmm. them talk with you, and um, I think you'll enjoy that. And they'll enjoy it and you can get some good, you know, and gets now you talk to the owner, but you know, talk to the coaches and talk to the players. And I, you know, we're here for you. We appreciate you covering in arena football. We appreciate you covering us and supporting. And you know, whatever we could do to help out big boy sports and and assist you, man. We appreciate it. Well, I appreciate y'all because y'all, because y'all the the whole the, everybody everybody in in the arena indoor scene so far I appreciate everybody I appreciate everybody everything you know all right brother well have a great day man and uh, let's go Buffalo Bills this weekend <laughs> all right I I will be watching that game this weekend definitely all right man thanks yeah. have a great day thank you man appreciate it so that is basically it everybody. Um, Justin has left the building. Um, well, not the building, but you get what I mean. Um, again, this was completely not planned today. Uh, I'm not going to lie to y'all. This was not planned today. I was going to originally do lacrosse today. Um, I'm going to do that next week instead. So lacrosse next week. We'll talk maybe if the Albany Firewolves are still undefeated. 
we'll, we'll talk. And of course, you know, scrimmages, stuff like that. Uh, college lacrosse is coming. PLL stuff, MSL, you know, everything in between. I know this is a 30 minute video, but it's okay. Um, I want to thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for supporting Big Boy Sports. And to the person that subscribed like a couple of days ago, welcome to the party. You're number 241. Welcome to the party. Um, yeah, so I will see you all next Saturday sometime, probably in the morning again. I might bring somebody on for next Saturday too. So who knows? Um, so Big Boy Sports is signing out, and I will see you all soon once this is up.